Chris here with Music Marketing TV, and today we are taking a look at Bose Digital Labs Transgressor 2. It is a transient shaper. We're going to be using it to rein in a snare and a kick. But before we get going, let's go ahead and hear a little music sample we're going to be using. This is actually part of a much bigger track. It's just a section where the kick and snare are sort of doing their thing. And I'm working with samples, so this is a great way to just sort of dial in a sample. Let's go ahead and just hear this. So that gives you an idea of the track we're going to be using. Let's go, let's solo up the snare and let's dive into Transgressor. I'm going to remove this one and add on a fresh one. So we're starting from the same place, same spot. And let's turn it on. So first off, when you come on here, if we, if we play it, you'll notice that I had a pretty sick display up earlier. And by default, you know, it doesn't show up. That is from this guy right here. They also have an input detector. I typically keep this off. And this is kind of cool because it updates as you go. So you've got a transient section and a sustained section. And if you want to treat it like your typical transient shaper without any of the extra bells and whistles, you can turn sustain off and just use the release control and the gain control, essentially. So right now, we're only going to hear the transient. And we want to make everything transient. So we'll just bring the threshold all the way down. And this is basically the decider area. It decides if something's transient or sustain according to this threshold. And right now it's very, very short. If we bring up the hold, this will just make the transient section longer. So you get more of the sample. This is sort of like almost like a gate. And then of course, how long it takes to go off is according to the release. So if you bring the release up, So you can sort of dial it in back and forth and then let's say, oh, I want to boost it here. You could bring the gain up, you know, so on and so forth. Double click to reset stuff, you know, the standards. So up next we have the sustain. So if we come over here and go over to the sustain, you're able to just look at, you know, what's going on with the longer portion of your sound. Now, right now it's just picking up the super long stuff. If we bring this closer to the middle, and then we begin to mess with the hold. This is going to begin to influence, you know, what it sees, what the detector sees as a transient and the sustain. So we start bringing this up. You can introduce more and more of the transient into the sustain area. So we could sort of solo these around and sort of get two pieces of the pie. We can get the beginning just how we want it and the sustain just how we want it. And we can influence those things separately. Super easy. So let's go, let's dial in ourselves a transient setting. That's right. Very, very short. Something right around there be pretty useful and with the drums there's a couple you know big ones so there's going to be with a snare drum there's typically something in the in the middle a specific tone that's going to be the hot spot so you may want to boost that or reduce it if it's overbearing on this one i'll try bringing up some of the high end a bit and then this low end we don't really need you can right click on these nodes to choose their type so for example this is a low pass and just so you know, the filter over here has to do with the sidechain input. So you can drive this with the sidechain. Uh, you've got like the internal, you can send an external signal. Internal just means it's listening to the audio that's coming in and using that as its own sidechain. And then you could drive it with some MIDI. So this, this does not have to do with the filter settings here. That's over here. And the controls are down here. You can switch between them down here. They update when you hover over them, which is kind of nice. And of course, you can just click and use your mouse wheel to adjust the cue and things like that so we might remove some of this low end we don't really need that much down here just you know a little bit of cleaning on the transient perhaps just because it's so transient you may find boosting it to actually be kind of a cool effect but here i don't you know it's not gonna do me any favors really so i'm just gonna leave that down and say hey okay let's try that out and let's bring in the sustain and on the sustain we might try Raising the high end, I don't like what that's doing. I don't think cutting is the right. I think it's actually pretty much settled. Let's go for some mid, low mid boosts. Not too much. In fact, let's actually duck it out a bit. 
something like that. And there you go. So we'll do, let's go ahead, let's do a before and after. So I'm gonna go ahead and bypass this. And after. So much stronger attack. That's something, maybe I'll dial it back a bit here, but keep the EQ change. And if I want a less aggressive, I can bring this down. And we can hear it in context. And that is a little bit of working with it. Let's go ahead and let's go over to the kick. Let's add a transgressor on this and see just what kind of things we can get out of it. Maybe, maybe we'll really like what it does. Maybe not. I'm already kind of happy with the kick. I've got the bass running through here as well. We'll go ahead and mute that. Okay. So that's the kick. Let's go ahead. Let's hear what's going on in the transient side. And let's see the scope. I love the scope. Bring the release up a bit. A little less. Right around there. Let's hear the sustain. So we could try with a kick. A high boost also can be kind of cool. Let's try out a low thing too. And then let's use a, uh, a peaking filter for this. We're going to use high shelf bell. There we go. A little bit of low thump. And let's go ahead and go over to the sustain. <laughs> Just looking for a nice spot. We could bring out the character because there's that nice airy section right there in this in the uh, sustain. And something that's always kind of an interesting sort of experiment is right now we have the hold on max. We could just move this around. And this is a great way to generate some layer kicks. Maybe you have a, a part in the song where you want the kick to be ducked a bit. You could simply have a second layer in parallel going to it and then you can automate the mutes on the mixer channels and have one with just a longer hold setting. I like the longer bit, so let's just do a bit of a before and after. So this was before. And it's after. I really brought it out quite a bit. And let's go, let's hear this in context. Let's do a before and after with the transgressors as a total. So this was kick and snare before, no transgressor. Now let's go, let's turn them on. This is after. is transgressor too if you have any comments questions concerns accusations inquiries go ahead leave them down in the comments subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day